Are you stuck in any rank right now? Well, then I will make you a promise. If you follow each tip, I'm going to give you on the ultimate rank up series. God damn it. I can promise you that you will reach at least mythic in this season. And if you are already more experienced, well, even reaching mythical glory shouldn't be such a problem anymore. And all of it in solo queue. Hello my friends! It's so good to see you. Although you are the one that can see me whatever. That was a bold statement, right? But I really believe what I just said. Let me explain you very quickly what this series is about. In this series, we will cover every important section of the game that are all 100% necessary to know when you want to rank up further than you ever did before. A new guide is coming out every Tuesday and Friday. After you've watched all of them and burned all of the information into your brain, ranking up to Mythic will become a cakewalk for you. And once it becomes second nature, that you don't even have to think about it anymore, you can grind up to Mythical Glory. This is by the way the community project I was talking about many weeks ago. Thank you to everyone who submitted their tips. Now let's finally start with episode number one, before the climb. That's right, there are already so many things that you need to know before you can seriously attempt to climb the ranks. Let's jump right into the game and talk about tip number one, know the meta. This is one of the most important things that you need to know before you even press the ranking button. You have to know what are the current meta heroes and you need to know who are the most OP heroes that need to be banned or picked. As a little teaser about the draft pick, we will talk in another episode. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. To be able to know what the current meta is, you need to read or watch videos about the patch notes once there was an update to know which heroes and item are getting nerfed or buffed. There's also the new hero adjustment section which is really helpful to give you an overview. For example, in the latest patch, a lot of marksmen got significant buffs. This is something you need to know, so you can adjust to it. Another example is that it took many low rank players months until they realized that Hellcut is not worth banning anymore, because he got completely destroyed by the nerfs. My recommendation for the patch notes, if you're too lazy to read like me, is Elgin. I'm sure you all know who he is, and I like to watch his patch note videos, because I like how relaxed he is while talking about it. Also, make sure to check out the heroes ranking, especially in the days after an update. Choose Legend Plus or Mythic and check the most picked and banned heroes. That gives you a great overview of the current meta when you want to rank up. But you can also wait for the tier list videos that I'm going to make after each patch from now on. The first one will come out in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. Now that you know the meta heroes, you should focus on being able to play at least two of them. I know, most of us don't want to play every hero, but you should have at least two heroes that are part of the current meta, because they will really make it easier for you to rank up. I know that every hero can be effective in the right hands, but an OP hero in strong hands is still much better than an underperforming hero in strong hands. So although I loved my Badang for so long, I can't seriously play him right now, because he's out of the meta. I spent Ruby in this season for example, because she is in the meta and was really successful with her. Almost all of these ranked games are solo queue by the way. The only games that I don't play solo are together with my wife, but that is quite boring to be honest, because she's too good. Tip number two, expand your hero pool. Now I already said you should know at least two meta heroes you can play, but I lied a bit about it. Before you're seriously going to attempt to push very far, you need a good amount of heroes that you're able to play. For each role, you need at least two but better three heroes that you're able to play. And by role, I mean the lanes. So the mid, XP and gold lane, the jungle and the Roma role. If you're going into a ranked match and have like two heroes you can really play well, it's simply not enough. They can get countered by the enemy's lineup or one of your teammates plays the same hero or role. What means you go into a match with two heroes who have the same role. Yes, you can choose to go to another lane, but your hero is most likely not meant to go there and it will make it much more difficult for you to perform on that level that you need in order to be successful in solo queue. If you want to be successful, you need a win rate of at least 60%, especially once you reach mythic, because if you win, you will gain 9 points, but if you lose, you will lose 10 points. What means with a 50% win rate, you will never move forward. And even with a 55% win rate, you only move forward very slowly. In 100 matches, you would only get around 45 points 
With a 55% win rate. While with a 60% win rate, you will get around 140 points in 100 matches. And with a 65% win rate, even 235 points. I know, that calculation is not 100% accurate, because of the protection points. But you get the idea here. This 5% are a huge difference, as you can see. But in order to perform on that level, that you can assure to have a 60% win rate, you need a good hero pool. So you always have a good performing hero in any matchup. Now you might ask, what heroes should you choose? Well, I've made a video for this a few weeks ago, where I'm showing you a perfect hero pool that will always perform well, no matter how the meta changes. Unless Mouton unnecessarily nerfs one of them to death. But this can no one foresee. For this seasons, they are all safe bets. And therefore, it's worth to train them how to play them. And talking about training, we have tip number three. Master your heroes. Nice transition, yes! We also need to talk about how to train a hero and master him. Playing a hero in two classic matches is not enough. Just that you know it. First, I would go on YouTube and check if there's a good and up-to-date hero guide. Watching a three-year-old guide is not a good idea, because the information are outdated. A hero guide gives you a good overview of a hero, especially the skills, and the combos are important here. The builds I would honestly ignore most of the time, unless the guide is just a few months old, because many things has changed in the last patches. After you know the basics, you can go to practice mode and test out all of the skills and really understand the mechanics of your hero. Test how the passive works, read the skill descriptions a couple of times, so it really sinks in into your brain, and train the combos for so long until you can execute them 10 times in a row, without missing a single shot. After that, go to custom mode and play one or two matches against the AI. If you want, get yourself one or two AI teammates. But I really like to go into these matches 1 vs 5. It's really not that difficult against the AI, because they are quite dumb to be honest. There you can continue to train the combos, but also get the feeling of the cooldowns for example. After you've done all of this, you should be already on an acceptable level with that hero that you can jump into some classic matches. I would suggest that you play at least 10 matches in classic though, and really test out the limits of your hero. If you win, doesn't really matter. Better try to find out what your hero can do and what your hero can't do. Do some risky things to see how you can react in the situations. And do that until you feel comfortable enough to try out that hero in ranking. From that point on, it's only a matter of experience and the amount of matches you play with that hero. The more you play a hero, the more you learn about the power spikes, the non-obvious mechanics and the limitations. What are good matchups and bad ones and so on. In each and every match, you can learn something new about this hero. So it's a huge difference if you play the hero 100 times or 1000 times. Although, the learning curve flattens of course, with each and every match you played. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned are builds and emblems, because I want to talk about them in tip number 4. Learn all the items and emblems. Simply copying the pro builds is not enough if you really want to get serious about ranking up. You need to know each item you use, so you can play at the strength of your build. What you need to be able to do is being able to make your own build that actually suits your playstyle. This is something I will explain you in detail in another episode of this series. But as a quick example, let's say you want to use War Axe on an assassin like Saber. When you use this item you have to make sure to stack up the passive of it before you fully engage with your ult. For Saber you can do that with a blades for example. You hit any unit with it so the stacks go up and once they are up you can engage with your ult. If this doesn't suit your playstyle because you want instantly jump on an enemy from a bush, don't use it. Without the stacks from the passive this item is really not that effective compared to other items and you waste a lot of potential extra damage that you could have dealt. Go for Hunter Strike or Blade of the Head the Seas for example as your first core item, but also be aware of their passive effects. This you have to know for each and every item in your build and also include situational items like Malefic Roar for example, which you use when you play against many bulky enemies and you need physical penetration. Especially as tank, you need to adjust your build according to the enemy. If the enemy deals mostly physical damage, you don't need to build 3 magic defensive items. If the enemies have heroes with regen abilities, you need to build dominance eyes and so on. The same goes for emblems. Since you can only have a certain amount of emblem pages, make sure to have a certain amount ready for different heroes. Luckily for you, I have made a whole series where I'm explaining every item and emblem in the game. And as mentioned, one episode of this series will be a guide about how to create your own build. Now, let's end this video with some quick fire tips. Tip number 5. 
Quick Chat. The Quick Chat function is something that can be really useful, so make sure to configure it properly. For example, the enemy missing Quick Chat is super important to make your allies aware that there are no enemies on the minimap or your counterpart on your lane is missing. Push first is very important too, so your allies remember to push instead of non-stop fighting, hopefully at least. Here you have my quick chat displayed, which you can copy if you want. Tip number 6. Always test your ping before a match. This is pretty self-explaining I think, but when you don't have the most stable internet, this is a super important point. Make sure to test your ping if your internet likes to move like a sloth sometimes. There's nothing more frustrating than losing a match because of lag issues and it will seriously hinder you from ranking up, especially once you've reached mythic. Depending on how bad the fluctuation is, just use the test pink option or if you really want to make sure that everything works, play one test game in brawl or classic. You can also use these matches to expand your hero's pool, so it's not any waste of time. Tip number 7. Get some friends. Playing together with a good friend or two will massively increase your chances of climbing up the ranks. If you guys have a good synergy, you can carry many many games, even when your teammates try everything to ruin your game. If you play with a very good teammate together in solo queue, play another game with that player together. This can become a wonderful friendship, even when it's just for playing. Or you join my discord server, where you can also find many players who have the same mindset like you, since you're all watching guides how to become better. Now let's get to the last tip, which is what I believe another super important tip. Tip number 8. Have fun! It may surprise you, but Mobile Legends is a game where you're supposed to have fun, so don't get too annoyed over your noob teammates and try to have fun while playing it. If your team is stupid, try at least to bully the enemy as much as possible or see it as a challenge that your teammates are running around like headless chickens once again. In the end, it's just a game and nothing that should ruin your day. It should be quite the opposite and make your day more enjoyable. So never forget that. You're not winning or losing any money after a match. So keep a positive blah, 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 blah. mentality I wanted to say. This will be the next big topic in Friday's video. The psychology of the game. Now a big shout out to my patrons Mist, Sensei Dragon, Corp Bear and Garou OP. If you want to support my work as well and get a lot of awesome perks, feel free to join it as well. And while you're waiting for the new video, check out my item guide playlist so you learn how each and every item in the game works to drastically improve your win rate. See you over there!